Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing great today. So what's better than a broken microphone is broken headphones. So I've just got my new microphone today and I'm actually really happy with it and I think I sound really good on it and natural. But I plugged in my headphones to try it out and they've broke too, somehow. The thing I don't understand is I had them both for a good two years and they worked fine, but they both decided to break at the same time. So I'm just currently recording this on my spare headphones. So I hope you will like my new microphone as much as I do. Make sure you check out the podcast in the description and check out my Patreon where we're going to have early access to all my videos coming soon. I want to share a message quickly before the video starts too. And that's remember, try not to compare yourself too much with others. I know when you struggle with mental health issues, sometimes you can compare to others and their happiness and it reflects negatively on you, but don't. You can only ever exist as you. So the best person to compete with is always yourself. And why would you want to be anybody else when you're you? And you can only be you. So make sure you don't compare to others. I know it's very difficult to say and actually do because sometimes I struggle with it too a little bit. It's going to be a thing you have to try and constantly remind yourself of. But honestly, I think it can make a massive difference when dealing with mental health issues. So I hope that helps some people out there. And I hope you're doing great and having a great week. Take care, I'll speak to you all soon. Now before I start my story, I'd like to give you some context. So my father was a firefighter, and he had really inspired me to do the same. He would always tell me these stories about things that would happen, things that wouldn't happen, the challenges, and just how much joy it would actually bring to him doing a good job. Now my dad loved going outdoors, and so did I. We actually spent a lot of our times going exploring the woods or going fishing. Sometimes even hunting, but not as much as I got older. But that's another story. We had also gone on camping trips and just loved being outside generally together. And living in such a heavily wooded area, it was only natural that I followed the same and fell in love with the woods like he did, and wanted to be a firefighter too. It took a lot of hard work and training, but one day I became a firefighter, and I absolutely loved it. Now the thing I liked more than anything was when we would get calls to go out into the great outdoors. Now my father actually said the same. He just liked the fact that you're in nature, and you feel kind of at peace when you're doing your job, and it's actually a lot more calm than normal. Especially when the elements were at play, like it might be misty or foggy. It I don't know, it just made it a really cool job. But however, there was one story that my dad told me about the woods that I could never forget and never made sense to me. He said it was something him and his friends who went on the call out would never really speak about to their peers or anyone above them because they were worried that they just wouldn't be believed. There was a certain area that every time they got a call into, things would go weird. The radios just would not work. They always felt as though they'd walked into an area where the atmosphere changed and they just had a really weird vibe. Now on one night in particular they get a call out just like any other and they know that they're heading to this area in the woods. So they all feel a little hesitant but they're all trying to psych each other up. They have to go and investigate an apparent missing person in the woods. Now this isn't something they would usually do but they were in the area so decided to help. They were looking for an elderly man who was apparently dressed in white clothing like a nightgown. Now, to most people this would be pretty normal, but just considering the area they were going to, they all felt a little weird about it. They eventually make it to the area that they have to search and they have to get out of their vehicles because the woods are quite dense. They have some flashlights and they start off. Now they search for a good hour and can't find anything. They end up splitting up to cover more areas. Now my dad is actually relatively calm at this point, convincing himself that the woods are fine and it's just in his imagination. He goes to radio to his buddy that he cannot find anything and thinks they should probably head back because if they can't find anything now they're not going to. As he does so he realises that his radio is not working. Now, he worries for a second but realises, oh yeah, this is what always happens in this area. 
and tries on a backup channel but still has the same issue. He then realises that he has to turn around now because what's worse than one missing person is two. He thinks he can see his friend up in the distance and calls out to him, but there's no answer. George. George, I'm here, can you hear me, buddy? Nothing. He thinks this is pretty weird, but maybe George is just too engrossed in the situation. Now, my dad takes one step forward, then stops. He says he gets a feeling that he's never felt before, like something's really off with the whole situation. He's frozen in his footsteps as his voice grows a bit weaker. George. He slowly turns his flashlight on to where he can see a man standing, and he realises it must be the missing person. It's not his fellow firefighter, it's somebody wearing all white. My dad says the moment the flashlight hits this figure, he can realise that it doesn't seem to have any hands, or feet. It's hard to describe because of the mist, but my dad's sure it's not his mind playing tricks on him. He then sees this figure slowly turn around, and he says his face is absolutely horrifying. It's almost disfigured, but not if that makes any sense. He does this disgusting smile with no teeth, and, like that, he vanishes. My dad said he was frozen in the spot for at least 10 seconds. He tries to scream out for help but he can't and he just sprints. He runs as quick as he possibly can for what must have been at least 15 minutes before he eventually bumped into his buddies. His friends are immediately really concerned and he tells them what happened and they all look at each other like they know something he doesn't. One of the firefighters then explains to my dad that George has seen exactly the same thing. He found the missing person, but as he approached it, it vanished. Now what's worse is when they radioed this in, the station told them to stop being ridiculous and to get out there to keep searching. This time they went in twos in case anything else strange happened. And they didn't find anything. Now you can imagine, that story was pretty badly stuck in my mind when I get my calls to go out to the forest. Now, to be honest with you, it didn't escape my memory when I was on call because of course, I'm doing a job here. That was until one day, I got called to the exact same area of the forest that my dad said he went to. It's not a missing person this time, however, there's a small cabin that's on fire. Now we believe this is an arson attack, and we're pretty annoyed that not only are there people stupid enough to be out in the forest at night like this, but now we've got to go out into the middle of nowhere, we can't do our job that we're supposed to do in other areas and put out a fire. Of course it's understandable, you don't want half the forest setting on fire, but it's just generally annoying. I'll never understand why people do things like this, but I digress. I haven't shared this story with any of my buddies before, so they're not sure about this area. Luckily for us, when we get out of our vehicle, we all have perfect radio signal. Now the strange thing is, when we get to the supposed area of the fire, we actually can't see anything burning, let alone embers. Now that's really strange because where there's smoke, there's fire. But we can't see smoke or fire, and we have to set out on foot. Now there's only four of us at the time, two of which are very close friends of mine and the other's a new guy. So we all have dismounted and get our flashlights, we do our radio checks and go through all the channels, everything's working fine. We begin by setting off in the general direction that the call was made. Now we walk for what feels like a very long time and can't actually see anything, and suddenly the new guy calls over to me, hey, I think I've got something. And what do you know? Up ahead of us is a burnt down cabin. Now it's strange because it looks as though it's rained recently, but there's no water present. There's just some tiny bits of smouldering. Well, that's one good thing. We don't actually have to put out the fire, but we have to make sure that nobody was there. And luckily for us, there was no signs of any life whatsoever. So we head over there to quickly check out what's happened and try and make a report of exactly what caused it. Now strangely, we can't seem to find any reason for the fire to have happened. We do call out to see if there's any idiots that have caused it and might be hiding waiting to see what happened, but 
we literally don't get any response at all. The report didn't take long, and as I'm standing there trying to figure out what happened, my buddy Ben lets out a terrifying scream. He says, what in the hell is that? We all turn around and we can see he's as pale as a ghost. I've never seen Ben like this before. Also, the new guy looks terrified too. The new guy won't even speak. They both swear to us that they saw a man in a white gown staring at them who disappeared into a tree. Needless to say, we didn't want to wait around for long, but we have to investigate what's happened. Suddenly, I become petrified with fear as I've realised what my dad said and where we must be standing. I'm pretty sure the new guy and Ben have just seen exactly what my dad saw and George. I decide not to tell them the story because I feel like I'm having cardiac arrest currently and I don't want to scare them further. We quickly do a look around and there's no one. To make this worse, not only one of them saw it but two, so we know they weren't imagining it and there's nowhere somebody could have ran or hid, we were too quick. We decide to call it into the station but they just tell us that it must have been the new guy worrying and triggering some kind of placebo effect for Ben, but I know that isn't true. We have no idea what caused that fire and no idea what the figure was, but the way it was described to me by my friends is exactly the same as what my dad saw. And when I told my dad what happened afterwards, he said promise me never go out into them woods again. Now luckily this was after I changed careers, but my god, he didn't have to tell me that twice. I have no idea what happened, and what terrifies me is that four people have all seen the exact same thing. A group of friends and I rented a place on a lake, just to have a fun adventure and weekend. We are all young in our mid-twenties and it's supposed to be a big party. For the most part, it is. The Friday and Saturday morning, we pretty much went all out to have a good blast on the water and just have fun. Stupid stuff really. Naturally, Saturday afternoon rolled around and we are all dead from going out so decided it would be a night of no drinking and just having a chill evening and night. That's what it was relaxed. So 9pm comes rolling around and about 8 of us are inside the house and 5 are outside. The house was a two story with a second story deck slash back pork. It was surrounded by the woods and then down through the woods you could hit a lake. I'll mention that we had already experienced some weird vibes from the locals when we first arrived in town mostly just backcountry old timers that assumed we're leering and irritating because we're having fun. But the town and the lake were large so nobody really seemed to care. Anyway, three of my friends were on the upstairs back porch and my other friend and I were downstairs outside just talking on this little area near the woods. I mean, it was otherwise just a really nice night. My friends and I were getting lost in conversation when all of a sudden there's a really weird feeling that comes over from us behind the woods. It was so strong that we both kind of went quiet and out of nowhere, this lodge, loud chanting abruptly comes from the woods. I have no idea how far away it was because the way the lake set up so I'm pretty sure the voices carried through the forest. It sounded like cult chanting and all of the voices are mal. I mean, they were loud and perfectly in sync. I think we froze for all of 20 seconds before I can't contain myself and dart towards the home with her following me. I don't know how to explain the feeling that the chanting given us, but it was truly evil. By the time we got up there, the chanting was gone and we said, did you guys hear that? Obviously in a very freaked out voice and they all heard it and not seconds later, it started again. So the five of us are out here peering into the woods listening to this chanting that would sometimes sound far away then relatively close, all male voices in the weirdest language I don't understand, sounding like a strange extreme church. Then following the chanting, a loud bang like somebody whacked a huge piece of metal, a man wailing like in extreme pain. All of the hairs on the back of my neck stood up, 
My brother and I were then staring at each other in a mixture of scared excitement and horror. The wailing stopped and then it was back to chanting that eventually dies out. I was so freaked out by it I want to call the cops because whoever was screaming is in a lot of pain. That mixed with the weird chanting just made me think that something terrifying gone on. One friend tried to say it had to be some drunk guys but this can't be. Now no I didn't call the cops and I would have but honestly the forest was so large that it'd be very difficult to locate exactly where the sounds were coming from. We went in and got some of the others but by the time they came out the chanting had stopped. Someone wanted to go and explore but obviously that's a bad idea. After that I was so ready to go home. I can't explain how scared I was and the feeling driving home was one that I'll never forget. It felt so wrong and evil. I can only imagine it was some weird occultists in the woods. Last year, I was backpacking in the deep mountains in Montana. I was nearby Libby Mountain, about three hours west of Glacier National Park. I was hiking alone and expected to encounter bears, grizzlies, mooses, etc. I am an experienced person with this and know how to handle them so I'm not really worried. But this time, I was way out in the middle of nowhere with no one around for miles. Also, no cell service anywhere and I didn't have my emergency beacon with me. Usually, I expect to see other hikers on the trail, but here none. I'm completely alone and know it. Well, it was like 9 miles to my camp at the upper Cedar Lake, about half a mile away. The trail actually opened up and into a somewhat clearing and has great visibility around me. There were still trees and undergrowth covering the ground, a few minutes later, I see something scurrying across the trowel, maybe 50 feet ahead of me. I stop, froze and wait. The creature noticed me and stood up into the undergrowth, but still almost covered by tall grass. It was about 3 feet tall, pitch black and about 60 pounds, but obviously intelligent and quick. I assume it's a baby bear, so I don't move or make sound. I got my bear spray ready fully expecting an angry mama bear to come at me, but that didn't happen because I would have surely been attacked or at least bluff charged at. Although I can't see its face through the grass, the creature stared at me invasively for 30 seconds. I don't move a muscle, then suddenly it huffed loudly at me, then ran through the grass to the side of the hill and I never see it again. The sound it made was a lot like a deeper sound than you can expect from something small, like a bear's growl. I stood there silently waiting for a few minutes to see if the mum bear came but it never did. One of the weirdest things that ever happened to me as a search and rescue person was one day we got a call out in the snow. We had a call out to go and rescue a man who went missing on a hiking trail out in the forest. Now I set off to search in the area designated to me. I have everything with me. The radio communication's very good and I find some footsteps. Great. I go to radio this in to the other workers, but as I do, my radio dies. I go to turn on my flashlight and this is struggling too. I call out quickly for anyone but get no reply. The snow's picking up a bit now. I decide the best thing to do is quickly follow the footsteps and see if it's a person we need, get them out of there and try and get radio signal on a hill. As I'm following the footsteps, I get a strange feeling that I'm being followed that I've never felt before. It's odd because obviously when you're looking for someone it's quite the opposite. What's worse is, I go to flick on my flashlight and it's died now. I switch in some new batteries and this doesn't work again too, which is really odd. It's something I've never experienced before or since. I keep following the footsteps until suddenly, I realise they just stop. Now it's strange because there's literally nothing around. 
no other snow's disturbed whatsoever. It's like whatever this thing was just vanished. Just as I'm standing there, the feeling that I'm being followed is unbearable. And for two seconds, I can hear voices all around me that stop just as soon as they start. I've realized this isn't what we're looking for, and I quickly sprint back the way I've come. I'm still looking around, but I don't see any signs of anyone. Just as I get back to where I started, I can hear my radio come into life. We found him. We got him. I radio in. Oh, that's great. I was just following the footsteps. Where are you guys? And when they reveal their location to me, my heart drops. They're three miles away from me. They say the man's alive and well. And to this day, I have no idea of what them footsteps were or why they stopped suddenly. My team investigated the whole areas just to see if anyone else was lost there, but there was no one. Now I work as an emergency technician, and I had one call out that I'm never going to forget in the woods. Apparently there was a fire, and people could hear screams of people. Now, of course to me that means I'm going to have to go and deal with some either potentially really hurt people or dead people, so I'm not really looking forward to this one. We eventually dismount from our vehicle, and I have all my gear with me. I run to the area where I can hear the screams next to where the fire was, but there's no one to be seen. I can hear the screams and shout out, I'm an emergency medic, what's wrong? The second I do that, all of the screams stop, and it's dead silent. I can just hear the police sirens in the distance as some more support arrives. I look at my colleague and he's gone pale, paler than I've ever seen him before. We search for hours with the police but can't find anyone or anything. Turns out nobody was hurt from the fire at all, but why could we hear screams like this? To this day I still don't understand what happened. Me and my brother always like to go exploring the deep woods. Now it probably wasn't the best of ideas, but we didn't have to go very far on the bus to reach a really good forest that we could go into. It was almost like a jungle. The grass was almost as tall as I was it felt like, and my brother was always there with me to enjoy it. Now there was one particular night that I'm never going to forget when we went investigating. We knew we couldn't be out for too long in case it got dark, and my brother says that he wants to go and explore something on the side and just to wait here. I say sure and let him go. Well, thinking it might be a game, I quickly got up and sprinted after my brother. I sprint for what feels like an eternity and realise that I'm now lost. Just as I do that, I hear a voice scream out, don't take another step forward. I'm frozen, and don't know who's called this to me. I'm scared now and run backwards calling out for my brother. I quickly make it up the tree to see what's happened, and I can't see my brother. Then I look up and to my horror, there must be a 50 feet drop just ahead of where I was, completely hidden by the grass. If I took another step forward, I would have fell to my death. It was only when I got older that I realised just how dangerous this is, and I quickly hurried down the tree, and eventually am reunited with my brother. I told him what happened and he's absolutely furious at me, but more angry at himself for going off too far to hear what happened. We never went back to them woods again, and I'm just thankful that I survived that day. But to this day, I have no idea what called out to me or who it was, Maybe it was my subconscious somehow saving me, or the paranormal, I don't know. About 10 or 15 years ago, a buddy of mine and I were camping in the Winnichi area of the Olympic National Forest, south of the Olympic National Park. We found a remote site that was fairly isolated, about as far into the wilderness as you can still get a vehicle. 
My buddy and I camped out about once a month back in these days. We were looking for Bigfoot evidence and whatnot. Our second night was by far the most eventful where we're sitting at the campfire and I think I hear noises. I hear faint singing, mostly ones in upper registers, like the choir of females. It was very faint, but I can definitely hear it and it seems to be getting louder to me. I figured it wasn't the wind playing tricks. However, I kept hearing it every few minutes and it's getting louder. Finally, my friend heard it too. We eventually pluck up some courage and manage to investigate what's happening. Now, we did a circle search pattern and found out it was coming from the road. We walked down to the road nearest to the campsite, which is about 300 yards away, and find an old church with a group of children all singing rhythmic church rhymes. The church has a small van that you can actually see just parked outside. I wave hi and nobody responds to me. I don't understand why they're doing it at this time, especially out in the middle of nowhere. I don't want to call it a cult, but I have no idea what it is to this day. Needless to say, we quickly got out of there. A little over a decade ago, I met and started dating a girl who lived in Tollin country, Connecticut, so I hauled up from way down south for a visit. I know it's a bad idea to cross, maybe in this case, state lines for a relationship, but I'm in my early 20s. So at any rate, perhaps the one thing I found that took away from all that was said is involving a parking lot in the country of Connecticut. Here in the south, at least, we tend to think of up north as big cities and industry. I was honestly surprised when I got to her place. It's in the woods with rolling hills, and even the distant moaning of cows. Now, I can't exactly say what, despite all this familiar terrain, was going on, but something felt inherently different. This isn't something I can outright put to words, but there was something that enchanted me about the northern wilderness. I had to drink it in as much as I could. I spent a lot of time dragging her through the brush. We explored some abandoned mills, found an odd ring of chairs in a clearing, and just generally frolicked and had a good time during our journey. Except this one place we found. I don't know exactly what it is, maybe an old theatre or a roller skate rink. All I can remember that it is painted black, and there are these morals of outer space scenes like flaming comets and UFOs and whatnot, maybe from the 60s or 70s. I might be wrong. Now, I'm a seasoned explorer of the abandoned. I even went into the so-called devil house of the Falkland at night, alone in parts of it and don't flinch, so I'm used to strange things. I think you can't really live in the country that much and not have a towel of one or two things that doesn't add up. The place bugged me out. It wasn't anything stereotypical like a cold feeling or an intense sort of dread. It was more a feeling that something's wrong, out of place, even though we're there, exploring and it's a date. Here's the thing, I want to go in, I wish I did, but I simply couldn't even try. Something about the thing was so foreign and off that I couldn't compel myself to do anything but turn back, and that's what I did. I've never experienced anything like this in my life, but I have a feeling there was either bad people in there or something bad had happened. I'd like to go back one day to find out, but this just seems really odd, especially the fact that there's nothing else around it too. My friends and I were camping out in the woods one day when we realised that there's a light off in the distance. Originally we thought that maybe it was a star but we realised that it's actually moving down too quick and it's below the tree line. We're not sure what this is so we signal back to it with our flashlight and call out, but there's no reply. Now that's a little odd. Now we're not too worried initially but we can hear a heavy breathing coming from that direction. 
We do the same again and realise that it's coming towards us very quickly now. Just as I turn to my buddy to say that this doesn't feel good, I hear a blood curdling scream that I've never heard before. It didn't sound human, and now whatever the light was, was bolting towards us. We quickly gathered up the things we needed, leaving our campsite behind, and bolted to my buddy's car. I quickly glance behind and I can see that this light is still following us. It's not even going towards a campsite now, it's going directly towards us. My buddy slams on the accelerator, and I can see that thing still chasing us, but stopping just before the road. I have no idea who or what this was, but I'm glad I didn't have to find out.